Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mo and I'm starting my video at work in the break room. So if someone comes in here, just know it's getting cut off. I am reading classic books by black authors. First I'm reading They Watch Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Hey y'all. Um I I did not update y'all at all, but I finished Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. So basically we follow JD Crawford and um this is set in nineteen thirty seven or it was written then. Hold on, let me just read a summary right quick. Cause I was trying to spit some off the dome, but I don't got it for you. Fair and long legged, independent and articulate, Janie Crawford sets out to be her own person. No mean feat for a black woman in the thirties. Janie's quest for identity takes her through three marriages and into a journey back to her roots. I find it interesting that we're still talking about like similar hot topics today in a book set in the 30s. We're still having these conversations about colorism, the role of the black woman, the role of women in the house. I did like the metaphors that Hurston uses, the way she writes phonetically, and just the overall flow of her writing was really nice. Some examples of how she wrote, I wrote down. So Janie had experienced abuse by the hand of one of her husbands. And during this, it says, Janie stood where he left her for unmeasured time and thought. She stood there until something fell off the shelf inside her. Then she went inside there to see what it was. It was the image of blank, tumbled down and shattered. But yeah, she went inside herself and the image of how she saw this man crumbled down. Another one, all of these have to do with the men and just like how they left her desolate and broke down. The years took all the fight out of Janie's face. For a while, she thought it, it was gone from her soul. The last one I wrote down for that example was she sent her face to Blank's funeral and herself went rollicking with the springtime across the world. I really did not expect the ending with like the weather and the, like the madness going on. It threw me off. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. And then Janie, she just had trauma after trauma after trauma and like with a little sprinkled happiness, but like trauma. There were just so many times that I went to like wrap my hands around the men's throats because they had the whole game up. Like, how do you have a bad bitch like Janie? And you're trying to keep her hair tied up. You're trying to keep her away from, from the general pop public. You're trying to keep her in the house, barefoot in the kitchen. You bagged the bad bitch. Like, what, do you, what did you expect? A takeaway that I already knew about this book is never trust a man. At least not his words, trust his actions. Um, Kia tells us all the time, you put your trust in a nigga super hoe. How you figure? And Janie got taught this lesson several times. Like, it sound good. Yeah, it sound good. And then as soon as she would marry these people, oh, they got you. Oh, they got you. And it's sad. I did love seeing Janie's complete growth over her different relationships. She found her voice and just her own self-love. Okay, I thought this was a romance book. Nothing about this was romantic to me. Even her last husband, like, that was, like, the love of her life. But he wanted for real to me this was more of a self-love journey than it was a romance and i was expecting a little romance i'm not gonna lie um yeah and then i did write ruby d did an amazing job narrating this book there was like certain aave use throughout the whole book i think it was set in the south like some of it was in florida but i feel like it was somewhere else too but like it was very lazy drawl and like southern speaking where I would have got stuck on some words and going slow. The narrator really like I was encaptured in the whole experience. Like I was I was with them. Some of my highlights was obviously Hurston's writing. I really loved like is this poetic? It was very descriptive sometimes. I really liked the writing. I really liked when like the town people were just trying to get the tea. <laughs> like just like them playing check checkers or chess or whatever on the porch and like throwing back there's a drink called coon dick. I was like, I want to Google that, but I also don't. So I didn't. But I'm like, Grr. but the liquor was liquor and child. Yeah, that's really all. I wasn't getting into details about like each man, but like, read the book. <laughs> Just read the book. Um, I'm going to give y'all my rating and then I'm going to start The Street my Aunt Petri. Characters, I gave six because the men weren't right atmosphere eight it was like painful a lot at times it was also beautiful it was sorrowful like it was it was sad writing style 10 give her her tens plot eight intrigue nine logic seven enjoyment seven so that came out to be 7.86 and that was 4.25 stars i feel like i should have gave it five stars just off the strength of it alone just off of the name zora no hurston but i had to be realistic 4.25 is not a bad rating okay i'm really glad that i read it yeah, first classic down. I'll see y'all in the next clip. Bye.
Hey hoes. Um, I left my tripod at my best friend's house. So this is what, this is the best for right now. Like, it. hold on, my best friend's is in. Oh, anyways, I was asking her cause I was um, editing my Christina C. Jones vlog that should be out before this one. And I asked her, I said, how do you feel about the whole like your mind thing? And I did like the emoji that's like with the, she said, I don't love it because it just feels weird and possessive, but also I have fallen victim of it and will continue to fall gladly a victim. You're disgusting. Anyways, so The Street by Ann Petrie. So like, honestly, I'm only just now getting like super, super interested in it. Thoughts are all over the place, but we've been through that. The pacing, I'm only at 20%. So like, honestly, you had to get into a groove of it. But like the pacing, it was dragging for a while for me. Like I knew the story was interesting and it was going to get better. But, like I was not seeing the... Is it Silver Lining? I don't know. I don't know if I did a summary for this book, but basically we're following Luddy. She's a single mom now. Um, She's trying to take care of her son and work hard, save up money, but it's hard in this economy. Nothing new. I feel bad for both Luddy and Bub. Bub is her son. For Luddy having to get out the mud to provide for a decent life for her son, basically. And then for Bub, how hard Luddy is on him because she's working so hard for him to have a better life. I can't speak to this experience as like a single mom raising a young black boy, but it's like, damn, he can't do shit for real like he tried to do something to save some like get some money and she didn't even know who was involved with that if she does if she did she she'd go a little harder but damn he's just like you always saying we don't have enough money so like you be telling me how important it is to save money so i get a job and like whatever like on her end she's just like no like white people think that that's all we do is like the hard dirty work that my son is not gonna be doing that like if you're gonna start at eight cleaning shoes you're gonna be doing that when you're 80 so f all that i don't know i see what she's coming from but like he's eight and like she put him in a better situation than what he was in previously because I guess he was staying with um Luddy's dad and his little girlfriend and Lil was like trying to get him to drink and like smoke or whatever and like honestly she's just trying to keep her boy out of trouble. Another note that I put I really don't want to wrap around to like a, a SA scene with the super or the landlord because it's kind of given that the first impression that she had of him, he just seemed like really sleazy and grimy, like really dirty. Like I would like to wash my hands of him. I'm very scared. I'm very scared of what he will do to her. I just read a scene and I'm going to tell y'all about it. This is supposed to be spoiler free, but I'm going to tell y'all about it. And also you just really see Luddy just struggling to raise a child without any kind of community. Damn, it's something every, every chance that I feel like I've figured something out, like, oh, okay, I got the apartment, but the apartment is like, what else am I supposed to do? Every time something comes up, like, what the f I need advice. It, it is really sad when people don't have like a community or a village to, to lean on and depend on. Also, after she smacked the little boy up, she sent him off to the movies and said she hoped he knew it was a peace offering for having lost her temper and slapped him out there in the street. Why do they berate and discipline a child in a certain way and then in a way that is not okay? A lot of a lot of discipline is through violence and I don't think people realize that they should not do that. Or they just don't care. Obviously, you can be mad and be like, I'm doing this because, you know, you shouldn't have did this. To be like literally beating your child because you're just so angry without explaining. This is an eight-year-old black boy. Without explaining, like, why are you knocking him upside the head? Again, I'm not a parent though, so I can't, I can't. For her to be like, oh, I hope this is, you know, but never said sorry. And like so many people, like literally that happens so much. Like literally a parent will do something and then they'll just be like, you hungry? Am I hungry? You just beat my ass. You just gave me something to cry about. Am I hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay, so I'm reading it. It got into the super's point of view on chapter four, which like, I don't want to hear from him. Ew. But he started like bonding with the boy, Bub. There's a period of time between whenever he comes back from school and when his mom comes back from work. So he'd be in the street playing with the other kids. Like she really don't like none of that. She, but she's like, where can he go? Somewhere safe and free. He's playing with gutter dogs. She's just like, this is not a safe environment, blah, blah, blah. So he gets close with the super and she's like, damn, like, how do I tell him? Like, I don't want him to have anything to do with him. Like, the super is like in the boy's ear, like, oh, your mom's so pretty, blah, blah. So we get in the super's point of view and he's just like, basically, he need to f something real bad. The pressure done built up. <laughs> the pressure done built up. He ain't had a young hoe in a minute, okay? And he been looking at Luddy real bad. So... He's hanging out with the boy and he's just like, I started noticing like he got broad shoulders and he got a little curl on his head and he's just really analyzing the boy. And he's just like, he's starting to look like that. Look at that Luddy f His father. The boy said, what's the matter, Soup? You look sick. He said, go away, violently. 
he had felt that if the child should touch him, he would try to kill him because the child was an exact replica of his father. That unknown man who had held Luddy in his arms, caressed her breast, felt her body tremble against him. You're weird. Getting this heated at a child about do you never even seen? I would like to be removed from his point of view expeditiously. And then we've got Mrs. Hurd or Hedges. I forgot the lady's name, but the like, I think she's like, I think she's like the head prostitute or like the manager of, I don't really know, but she's the one that'd be scoping out the scene. And she was like, hey, when Luddy went out for the night or whatever, she was like, just letting you know, I, I know a nice white gentleman. And Luddy grew up where like her grandma and everybody was just like, you know, do not f with a white man. She like had jobs before where white women are like, you know, black women, they they so easy. Like they they will fall at the knees, like they will fall at, at the feet of a white man. Like they they are so promiscuous and scandalous and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, little do they know, I don't, I don't f with y'all. I never want to touch a white man ever. This is the 1930s. Like literally her grandma was born in slavery. So she's just like, yeah, um, white men don't have a good rap. So she's like, f all that. So I'm just like, I really hope that if she does bust it wide open for anybody, because we do support sex workers in this household, if she does bust that cat open, can it not be the super? Like, honestly, I'd rather her just a white man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, if he's actually a nice gentleman, which... <sighs> and that's the crazy thing, too. You be seeing people online be like, oh my gosh, she's such a hoe, she do OnlyFans, she do all this. But it's like, who do you think is paying for the OnlyFans? That was just, I, yeah. <sighs> I'm only on 20%, y'all. And I'm getting scared. Hey, y'all. I am on my way to work. And I want to update y'all on the book. Because I... <sighs> so, I found out... I've been trying to figure out where I can get the audiobook. Because I've been reading this book for like a week, I feel like. And it's really good. But I just like cannot give my time to it and my attention just reading it off the ebook alone like i wish i had the physical book or something like something tangible that i could like hold on to like a voice um which is not tangible but y'all y'all okay okay not y'all y'all anyway i'm in a good mood i'm not cussing so i found out that the book was on on spotify my best friend has spotify premium so shout out to nicole she making this happen she making this shake for me um i'm using hers and i got to chapter 10 in the book which is like basically a little bit over 50 percent and i started that today i was on 30 at the beginning of the day so i'm like i'm vibing i've been reading for like an hour and a half two hours before i had to get ready for work i have notes on my phone but obviously i'm rec I'm recording on my phone i'm not gonna say obviously i don't know if y'all know that i record on my phone i have my notes but just like the overall like aura of the book is just so sad and like dreary like every chapter is just like you know this is the struggles of people that are impoverished the book has not taken the turn that i thought it was going to take just in these last couple chapters she like met this guy named boot smith he's also kind of slimy and grimy like he's trying to like sugar like sugar sweeten up his voice and make it seem like he's just like oh baby like you have a nice voice i just want you to be in my band or whatever because he heard her sing at this bar and um he's like you should join my band and she could actually sing apparently like she she puts a lot so much like raw emotions into her voice like she could sing it switches between people's point of views like we've been in the super's head we've been in men's head which is like the lady that stays with him by the way the audiobook her name is ludy i've been calling her luddy but it's like ludy like cutie and that's how it's spelled i wish i had like a phone doc yeah whatever i'm just telling you something real quick it don't even matter for real in his head he's like oh like these young hoes like all of them all you gotta say is like you got a little emotion and like they 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 ready to fall like she's like talking about marriage like she's trying to in her head she's like oh i'm gonna use him for what he's got like i need to get out the streets like i need to provide a better life for my son and me like i'm not worried about all that like i'm just gonna do whatever i can to like get out of his face and like not offend him so he don't like get like rejected and get angry like some men do so she's saying all that in his head he's just like oh like all you gotta do is like show you got a little emotion or whatever and like you don't even have to like marry for real. like she gonna she gonna rip off a little piece of this little cat for me basically and i'm just like uh like why how, how does she keep getting involved with these grimy men like obviously she can't choose who her landlord is but like the street that she live on i guess it's the best of the worst and then men she went to like this root work doctor or whatever which it was like that came out of nowhere i feel like this it took the book somewhere i didn't expect it to go but she went to like a root doctor because she's like i need him to get his eyes off this young hoe and i need him to keep me in his house and she's like i don't pay rent like even if he don't with me for real, like it's nice to be around the company like I, she's always just been like in the background and she's like this is my first real defiant act and like i'm doing this for me but my thing is okay he's gonna stop looking at Ludi, but he can still he's been looking at young hoes he's been thirsting like the way he describes his thirst 
for young hoes is not i don't mean to say hoes but for young women it's just so disgusting like i'm like these are real people like this is really how some men think this is how people really think in the real world like i'm just disgusted like you think you just living your life doing your errands minding your goddamn business and it's men thirsting over you like like a dog that ain't never seen a bone <sighs> god damn i feel like i'm yelling now but i'm gonna go i'm, I'm enjoying myself i'm liking it hey y'all so all i wanted to do was basically just recap the street by ann petri because i did finish it the other day and i didn't finish my thoughts um i actually started my last book of the video too so we're gonna get into all that jazz oh there's just so much to talk about i kind of wish i didn't do this spoiler free so I can really get into the nitty gritty of it all, like the specifics of the scenes and stuff like that. But for a second, I was kind of standing Mrs. Hedges, but then I went from like not understanding to kind of standing her a little bit and then really disliking her. She was just not a girl's girl at the end of the day. As much as she probably thought she was or whatever, I don't think she even cared. I don't think she had a lot of morality about anything. She was just all about getting her money. And her story with like the, the her image, is it was sad to read and like just like her self-esteem. I don't really know why that was like a really big part in the the book i mean the book like a lot of the themes are racism classism sexism misogyny um literally every man every everything wrong with her life i feel like had to do with man so uh ludies by the way not mrs hedges i did love that ludie did stuck stick with her morals because i wasn't ex i was expecting in certain situations for her too and then i was gonna say well i wrote this note before i finished the book that she didn't let her circumstances she didn't let her circumstances completely drown her. Um, baby, the ending whooped my ass. It's like, as we kept getting progressively towards the end, I was like, for sure, that's not gonna happen. There's gonna be a miracle. There's gonna be something different about this. This is not clicking the way it's supposed to click. And the thing is, I would like a different ending, but like the way it ended was how the story was intended to, and it made sense for what the author was trying to do. I kind of wish there was a sequel. Like, I want to know what's going on in these people's lives. Like, I'm invested. I'm invested. Um, there's a character that died. I won't tell you how, but I don't feel bad. Justice. All of y'all are grimy, stinky, disgusting. You should die. I really hate that there are just so many systems put in place to keep groups of people down. People of color, um, let's be honest. Um, disadvantaged people people with disabilities there's just like so many things put in place to keep people down and like i already know that but like the more you read stuff and like you just look into things and like what your government is funding and all this shit that's going on globally it's just like this is set in the 30s and the 40s you would think with all the things that we've come from we wouldn't be so stuck and like whenever i read a classic i just i just keep thinking like there's really nothing new under the sun. People do not learn from their mistakes. And yeah, I think that's really all I have to say. It was great. I liked reading it. I would read it again. I would recommend it to you to read it. Characters 10, which is crazy because I hate everybody. But like the, the hatred that I felt, like, like the way my heart was racing during certain scenes and the way like I just got like actually like physically upset. She and Petri had to get her 10s. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. But she had to get them. Atmosphere, 10. Writing, 10. Plot, 9. Intrigue, 9. Logic, 9. Enjoyment, 9. And really, enjoyment, I was kind of like, what do I put there? Because, like, a lot of things I didn't enjoy. It was very sad. Honestly, I don't know anything that I did enjoy. Like, I, I like the... Okay. This is not coming off right. It was really written, written well. <laughs> written. It was very well written. But, like, it was just so sad. And that's all I got. It was just so sad. Um, but that ended up being like nine and three sevens or something like that. And I don't, I didn't know how to do that. So I just was like, okay, once it's over nine, that's five stars. So that was five stars, five stars. And now I'm reading If Bill Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. I said that so hard, Bill Street. That one I have on audio and ebook for my library. So I've been listening to that and I'm on 25%. Let me tell you about the book. Well, I'm not gonna read a summary. I'm just gonna say in short, we're following Clementine, AKA Tish. I don't know what her middle name is. I don't know why that's her name. At the beginning of the story, she is finding out she's pregnant and she's telling our family and she's telling the guy that she was dating named Fonny. And Fonny is 22, she's 19. And I hate that age age gap. I know back in the days, things were a little different. I think today people still think it's back in the daytimes when it comes to dating and ages, but um, 19 is barely 18. And um, that's barely, like you're still a teen and then 22 i know it's just three years apart but it's just you know 
everything with that it was just a little icky to me so i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to you know not be all in my you know whatever um but he is wrongly convicted of a crime i haven't found out what it was yet but her family is trying to gather up funds for lawyer fees and stuff like that to help help him out that's all i know it's really weird the way it's, it's written i don't know how to explain the point of view i've noticed that a lot of older books kind of do this well at least the ones that i've written i mean i've read this these like the two books that i read okay it seems like point of views jump and like they don't always explicitly say like who's talking it kind of feels like i'm reading someone that has like a kind of attention deficit disorder like no no shade absolutely no shade but like it's just like as soon as she thinks about something it'll bounce off to someone because we get the main point of view is is the, in the voice of tish but like i think once it gets into someone's story okay for example she'll talk about like fanny's mama and then it'll be in fanny's mama's point of view kind of like that which is another book i read like that i feel like what was the book i read before the street if their eyes were watching god it was kind of like that if you've read that i believe i don't know if they're exactly the same but it gives off that like it's kind of like you do need to pay attention and like it's something i definitely don't like I like to just read with audiobooks whenever point of views are like that because it's confusing to listen to for me i have to really just sit there and focus and y'all know I, I i speed shit up so i'm enjoying it so far it's reading really fast it's like only 200 pages so once i get done editing i kind of want to finish that today maybe like listen to the audiobook while i'm washing my hair sounds like a plan or at least tomorrow i want to wrap this book up i'm probably just gonna talk to y'all whenever i finish i'm just not really in the mood to do updates right now let me see if there is something to talk about what i've read so far because like i think i highlighted something but i don't even know oh i remember oh lord hold on i was about to forget exactly what i was going to tell y'all the other day when i started reading it these are my thoughts um what the fuck? question mark so fanny was like a big brother to her and then they smashed question mark question mark and his parents sex sick face puke puke james baldwin why did that man have to say as soon as you get to be a little child again acts like a little child ew so this is this the way i read that was really robotic and weird but like fanny i don't know how they came upon the conversation but they were talking about their parents having sex at one point and there was just like a whole like three four pages of his parents having sex like he was just listening to it and like the dad said something like oh like he was trying to pretend like like they were role playing as like he, he he was a preacher and she was just like a really bad sinner or something and um to each his own i'm not trying to yuck their young but uh he was like i'm finna jesus finna come get you as soon as you get naked like a little child and then he said a little child like two times and i'm like why in a sexual context are you bringing up kids i don't know and that's just something i don't know if that's just because like i don't know a couple things that I highlighted he has an estranged relationship with his mom like he's not close with his dad either it's weird it was like he calls him frank but like they're buddies like it's literally like he's one of his little friends and i don't i don't know i don't understand the dynamic but his mom literally was like i think she's light-skinned and she looks at him different because he's darker and his sister's also like that um they think they're better than him so they look down their nose at him and there's a quote that I highlighted and it says, I guess when he gets mad at her or something like that or they're into it, he's like, you remind me of my mama. But she says, I don't remind him of his mother at all and he knows that. But he also knows that I know how much he loved her, how much he wanted to love her, to be allowed to love her, to have that translation read. And parents' love is so important and crucial to growth and development and just like the way that he was um starved for that. It's so sad. Justice for Fani. And justice for Fani because he in the prison, in the jail. I don't know. And then there's also a little section where it was like, it's a miracle to realize that somebody loves you that she said about Fani. The way he looked at her is the way he looks whenever he's like working and he's really passionate about something. And she's like, wow, like it's just, it's just really nice to see the love someone has for you in their eyes. And I'm like, wow, have I ever even had that? <laughs> don't, don't think so. <laughs> it was kind of sweet. Even, uh, even though I'm trying to not think about their ages and stuff like that. And then the fact that like, he kind of looked at her as like a little sister and she looked at him as a big brother was just like, and then y'all decided to have sex. I guess, child. Uh, they're about to tell his people. She told Fani first that she was pregnant, and then she's about. They about to tell his people. But that's definitely not gonna go well with the mama and the sisters. But the rest of them are happy, so that's all that matters. That's all I'm gonna probably say to y'all, and then I'm gonna tell y'all my rating later, either tonight or tomorrow. Bye. Hey y'all. Um, I'm wearing hoops in the house with the thing on only because I saw the hoops and I was like, give the girls hoops. So. 
I did finish A Bill Street Could Talk and that is the last classic that I'll be reading for this video. These are some of my thoughts. I'm just gonna tell you the rating off rip. Um, I was gonna rate it 3.75 but I ended up bumping it up to four. The more I just started thinking about it and writing my notes about what I wanted to say, the book was just so much like, it was so many layers in just a 200 page book. There were just so many points that you could dissect and expand upon, which I won't be doing today. I, I won't be doing it, <laughs> um, but it was really interesting. So characters, I gave a seven, atmosphere six, writing style, I did give it a seven. It could have been a lot higher. Really. It could have been like an eight or a nine. Plot, seven. Intrigue, eight. Logic, six. Enjoyment, five. Which I know what you're saying. How is it four stars and you only enjoyed it a little bit? I don't know how to explain that. I didn't enjoy myself, but like what it accomplished and what it was like intended to do, I, I respect the fuck out of. It did explore systemic racism, such as racial po profiling and wrongful conviction. That was like the main thing. There are people today that are just wrongly convicted or even just a little bit of weed. An eighth of weed are in prison for years. It's just really silly to me what people decide to put their energy towards, especially this week when they was trying to ban TikTok. I'm like, do we want to talk about every single thing that's wrong in the US going on? Not even just the global, but just in the U.S. alone. And y'all are worried about a little kid app? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Throughout this book, we're following Tish and Fani's love and hope. And also his, her family. Because he found family in hers where he couldn't really get that from his family. He's really close with his dad, though. And you see how both those things, love and hope, guide them through really uncertain and rough times when they have nothing else they have that to hold on to there were things that could have been talked about with frank and his wife i won't be getting into that oh my favorite character and then i'm wrapping that up about the book i don't have a lot really to tell y'all that's spoiler free but i did my favorite character was ernestine that was tish's older sister she was just so real and she stood on business for real i think she don't play by her sister she don't play about nothing like i love that and i really want to see her beat Fonny's sister's ass and then lastly on my notes i wrote a thing that i hate when reading classics is just further confirming that we're not learning from history we're still a far ways away society has progressed a lot but not as much as we need to when more people realize that we are all connected and that race social status gender identity sexuality really any classification doesn't make any one person better than the next we'd be in a much better place which is really obvious and I, it sounds so easy and i'm just i i can't wrap my head around why it's hard for people to conceptualize that. Not even for the next generation, I don't see the change that I think we need to have. Not to say that I'm completely hopeless, but at this rate, I don't see much change, more of a regression with all these laws being overturned for basic human rights. On that note, we're done here. We are done here. Oh, I guess I never recap what I gave things. Let me, let me just do that. I like when people do that at the end of their videos. Let me see. Okay, y'all. <clears throat> In this video, we read Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I gave that one 4.25 stars. Then I read The Street by Ann Petrie. I gave that one five stars. And then lastly, I read James Baldwin's If Beale Street Could Talk. And I gave that one four stars. So overall, we had some solid reads. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed. I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye. <laughs>